With us today, we have someone who was just like us not too long ago. He served as a CTSO president for his state, went on to graduate with a degree in leadership, and has been a professional speaker and leadership coach for the past 12 years. And today he's here to impart on us how to have great moments more often. Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Barnes. And let's, let's make some noise for your National Executive Council, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for us. Yes. Hey, you know what? Even better. Make some noise for you. You're here. Make some noise for you. And we can't forget that one of the most important group of people in the room, if you are a state or local advisor, chaperone, and you're wandering off the street, you're an adult, uh, stand up. We want to give you a round of applause. Officers, chapter leaders, if you see one of these advisors from your home state, give them a hug, give them a high five, give them some money, give them something. Let them know you appreciate them. Some careful, hope they do questions. I am excited to be here. Uh, I know you guys have had a busy few days. Uh, I, on the, I appreciate the wonderful introduction. Thank you, sir. I, I have served in, in the capacity of a state president for my CTSO. Uh, I, I come from the state of Oklahoma, and I, I want to thank you uh, for having me. I, just give a little bit about me, a little background on myself. I have uh, two little girls, two daughters. I'm a daddy. Um, I know. It's amazing. I walk in the house and who's your daddy? And someone actually goes, you are. <laughs> two beautiful girls. And I, 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 I was sharing this earlier with, with Mark, my good friend from the state of Michigan. I, uh, I love my job as a professional speaker. This is all I ever wanted to do was to work with young people, work with adults, to, to develop leadership within other people. Um, but I, more than loving my job as a speaker, my favorite job in the world is, is not a father, it's not a dad, it's being a daddy. I love being a daddy. Two girls, one is six years old, her name is Mason. Uh, we have a two-year-old, and a two-year-old girl, her name is Bowen, or Bobo, or Bo, or Bocephus, Little Bo P, Bo Diddy, or Rennes Horse Red, Vice President Bo Biden. <laughs> Sometimes I just hold her up for wild animals and go, Simbo! She's my kid, I'll follow her. I love being a daddy. It's amazing. For those who are paying attention, I have two girls, and name's Mason and Bowen. My name's Kelly, I'm the only one with a girl's name. Okay. But I love being a daddy. There's a difference. A parents in the room, raise your hand. If you're a parent in the room, raise your hand. If you're a parent, very good. If you're a father in the room, raise your hand. If you're a father in the room, very good. Now, let me explain the difference for those of you who don't know. There are three types of parentals when you're a male. You can be a father, you can be a dad, you can be a daddy. A father is a distinguished figure. Father? Father is a distinguished figure. They impart knowledge and grace and all these things. A, a dad is one of those people that they make sure you know the, the, the important things in life, the right and wrong, they, they discipline in a great way. And then there's a daddy. I think a daddy is a combination of all those things. But they also spoil their little children because there's nothing I love more than spoiling my girls. I know it's probably not the best thing, but I'm gonna do it. And if you're a parent, you understand what I'm talking about. If you're a grandparent, you really understand what I'm talking about. And I have two beautiful girls, and, and the only thing I, that the only downside of my job is having to leave them uh, when I come. But it's great to be here, and it's great to spend some, some time with you. And I hope you enjoy yourself at our nation's capital. I hope you learn some things and the training that you receive. And I hope you take those home because this theme for what you're doing here, the theme for WLA is so perfect because it's so simple, but it, it rings so true. A theme of we care. We just care. Because when you say we care, what that means is we'll do whatever it takes to care. When you say care, it means I will continue to put the hours and hours of, of, of training and practice and study because one of these days someone's going to need you to care. I love being a daddy. When I read this, Theme we care, I realize that's what a parent's all about. Being a parent is just care. Doing whatever you can. Being a future health professional, it's about caring and doing what you can. So I want to have some fun today. I'm going to enjoy ourselves. If you look at the person to your left, the person to your right, look at them deep in the eye and say, You are so, so good looking today. Look <laughs> <laughs> to the person on the other table and say, You're so, so good looking today. I like that because some of you are like, hey. 
Come on, come on. Uh, as I travel the United States and, and work and speak at conferences and conventions, uh, I talk about creating great moments more often because I truly believe that when you create great moments, great things happen. And there are two types of great moments. Some of you have experienced the big great moments. This is a huge great moment. Show of hands, this is your first time in our nation's capital, your first time to be here. What a great moment. Yes, yes, round of applause. Great moment. There are big great moments you're going to have. You're going to have graduation. That's a great moment. You're going to have a birthday. That's a great moment. Wedding day, great moment. Birth of a child, those are all great moments. And, and we, we always recognize those big great moments. But what I want to talk about are the small great moments, the little great moments that we often overlook that happen every single day. For example, my daughter Bowen was born. We were in the hospital, and, and it, was a, it was an experience for me because my daughter Mason, she's, she's my bonus daughter. When I met her, she was 15 months old. So my daughter Bowen was my first experience with the birth of a child, and it was not how they portray on television. I had this sense of, oh, I'm going to be in scrubs, and there's going to be and there's all these things, and I'm going to wash my hands and walk backwards through the door. I was in a ball cap watching baseball, and the doctor walked in, and she said, let's do this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Ten minutes later, I'm holding a baby going, I thought there would be more instructions. <laughs> six days old, we get, we get my daughter home, six days old. She's six, come here six days, and, and my, my wife and I, we haven't slept at all. We've been out, you know, we, we'll take shifts, she can nap for an hour. Did this and that. And I remember my daughter was the sixth day, and I looked at uh, my wife and I said, Listen, you go to bed and you get a full night's sleep. You don't worry about Bowen, super dad's in the house. I got this. And she said, Are you sure? I said, Absolutely, don't worry. She said, I appreciate that. And I said, I'm not doing it for you. You have this look in your eye from the lack of sleep that says, If you don't get some sleep, you're going to hurt someone. You would never hurt the children, not the only option, right? <laughs> My daughter was asleep. She, my daughter Bowen, she was born. This isn't a condition. A lot of uh, parents are probably dealt with this. Uh, she wasn't colicky. She just had her sleep cycle off. So when she did really sleep, it was during the day that she was up all night. And, and that, if you're a parent, you've gone through that. Um, you know what I'm talking about. If you're, if you're a parent, you have experienced that, and you get the opportunity, pass that up. You don't want anything to do with that. My daughter's six days old. About nine o'clock night, she's up, and I'm doing it. Things super dads do, right? I'm, I'm playing, I'm googling, and I'm saying things in children's voices. It's about four in the morning, she's still up and she's screaming. I mean, she's in that one of those good cries, those cries where you really get to a point you don't even make a noise, you take a breath. She's in one of those good cries. I remember looking at her six days old, thinking, How can something so small make so much noise, right? She sounds like a little pterodactyl. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can. I'm going through the motions. I, you know, I feed her and I burp her and I'm rocking her and I, I, I put her in the little lumber thing. And I, go, I go get the car seat and I'm rocking the car seat. And I, I put the car seat on the dryer, turn it on. It does work. And I pick up there in the dryer, lemon sauce inside the like big, and nothing's working. And I, I, I remember, I remember back to the hospital what the nurse told me because she cared. She said, "Listen, if she gets really upset, she can't calm down. Here's what." Take her little pajamas off. Unbutton your shirt. Lay her here on your chest. It's called skin to skin. It's very soothing, comforting. So I've tried everything. I mean, what I've done, this and that, that pajamas. <laughs> Take them off. Unbutton the shirt. Lay down the recliner. I got on my chest, and, and I'm patting the back, and she's still crying. And I'm doing everything I can, and she won't stop crying. And eventually, as I'm breathing in and out, she starts to breathe in and out with me. I know. I was there. <laughs> and this little little girl, six days old, she rolls her little head over. She closes her eyes. She goes to sleep. And I remember thinking, this is a great moment. Not only did I help make this baby, I made her shut up. And at this point, <laughs> that's way more important. And as I'm laying there, my little daughter is on my chest. And some of the men in this room know this is a know this moment. I'm looking at her little, her little baby. I'm looking at this little baby that man, and I'm thinking to myself, man, what a great moment. And this warm feeling comes over me. <laughs> and then I realize this is not a warm feeling. <laughs> my daughter has peed all all the time. Because in my haste of thinking pajamas, I take pajamas numbers everything off, right? It gets worse. Not that worse. <laughs> She's asleep. I'm not about to move. I live in the next three hours, right? 
And at 7 in the morning, my mom walks in and goes, oh, and I go, no. She's like, are you sweating? I said, yeah, that's what this is. It's funny. What's funny is it's still a great moment. And I have to help you create those great moments. And the thing about what it takes to create those great moments, there are three things. Three things we really must do. And as future healthcare professionals, as, as people involved in this industry, as host of leaders, most of you in this room are doing these things so well, especially the advisors and the adults in this room who give and give and give to make what we're doing possible. Three simple things, and they're very simple. Number one, be present. I'll say it again, be present. Be present, be present, be present. The good days, the bad days. The good classes, the boring classes. The moments you, you feel like you can't study any longer. The patients that you may one day have that are troublesome and really getting to you. Be present. Be in the moment. I have a rule for my family, my girls, our rule is simple, it's be here, be now. Because people notice when you're present. More importantly, they notice when you're not present. People notice when you take the time to put the focus on them. And as someone who's, who's had an extensive career with, with HOSA, you do that so well. You take the time to put the focus on other people. As advisors and, and teachers in the room, you put the focus on other people, you give and give and give and expect nothing in return. We thank you for that. For those of you leaders in the room who will one day go on to pursue a career, whether it's in the health field or not, be present with people. People know when you're present, they know when you're not. My oldest daughter, Mason, she, she proved this point to me years ago. When she was four years old, I was in the race in Wisconsin speaking, and it was February 13th. February 14th is what? Valentine's Day. See what happened? Every girl in the room. Valentine's Day, every guy. <laughs> February 13th, I fly home, and there's a routine. We have a routine in our house. You are all people, you're creatures of habit. We all have routines. Our routine is simple. In my home, the routine goes like this. About 5 o'clock, the alarm goes up, I get up. And I get everything ready. And about 30 minutes before my daughter Mason, my oldest daughter, she has to get ready for school. Um, for 30 minutes every morning, since she was a baby, we would wake up, and I would go to the kitchen, and I would get her some milk. And I would get the milk on my bedside table, and I would get the TV set just right. And I would go get her out of her room and carry her in my room, and we would lay there. And for 30 minutes every single morning, tomorrow morning, this will happen. For 30 minutes, we lay together. She lays in her nook. And we watch the greatest television show in the world, Phineas Birch. <laughs> and that's our routine, and I love our routine. And that's our time. It's not my time to vote. That's just Mason and I's time. And we love our time, and we've done that for as long as I can remember. She was four years old two years ago. February 13th, I'm in Wisconsin speaking. I fly home, I get in late, it's about 1 in the morning, and I, I set my alarm for 5, I'm waiting for my 5 a.m. routine, but my 5 a.m. routine is disrupted because at 4.45, there's a 4-year-old slapping me in the forehead, saying, get up, get up, get up, Daddy, it's Valentine's Day, it's Valentine's Day, wake up, wake up, wake up. I look at her, I said, what's going on? She sees that I'm awake, she doesn't care, palm to the face, it's Valentine's Day. I said, baby, it's Valentine's Day in your room, go back to it. <laughs> she said, no, no, it's not. Oh, I forgot. And she takes off right into her room. I look over and I say, what's going on? Well, I forgot to tell you, we got in so late last night that I was asleep, but yesterday we went shopping for Valentine's Day card, and we were in Walmart, and I look down, and, and Mason's not there, and I, I freak out, and I go in the mall mode, and, and I go to the next aisle, and she's not there, and I go to the next aisle, and she's not there, I go to the third aisle. Tell me she's in the third aisle, but she's climbing up the card rack. You know, the wooden one, or the big one, she's climbing up it, and I said, Mason, Jane, get down. She gets down, she starts pointing, Mommy, Mommy, it's pity this one, it's perfect, he's going to love it. So I look at the card, I look at her, and I said, you're right, sweetheart, this is perfect, he's going to love it. By that time, my daughter Mason comes in, four years old, with this card in her hand, she says, here, Daddy, read my first. And I, I brought it with me, because I take it with me everywhere I go. This card has traveled hundreds of thousands of miles for the past few years, and I want to share with you what, what the card says, and see you. You can see right there, see, it's from Mason. See, it's from Mason. She, she misspelled her name, but it's okay. <laughs> the card says this, it says, Seize the Valentine's Day, but the trees go and taste it, the fun go and have, the compliments go and accept it, especially this one. It is her. It says, you're one ridiculously amazing, it says, kid. <laughs> And I don't share this with people because of what Hallmark decided to write. I share this because my four-year-old wrote me a note on Valentine's Day. And I'm going to share with you the note she wrote. And her note says this. It simply says, <laughs> it 
Squiggly mark. Dot dot squiggly mark. Football next below. That's what that's about. Short puppet. What's that going on? I don't know. A lot of people look at this and they say that doesn't make any sense. Parents in the room. Makes perfect sense, right? Because we have a drawer full of these. You see, this card doesn't say squiggly mark dot dot squiggly mark. This card says this. It says, I'm not old enough to buy you a gift. I'm not old enough to drive to the store. I'm not old enough to reach the car. I'm not old enough to write your legible note, because to be honest, I'm not old enough to really understand what today's about. But I know it's important, and I want you to know that you're important to me. You see, the card says, every time I come home from school and you drop what you're doing and just listen to me for 10 minutes, tell you about my day, that makes me feel like the most important person in the world. Thanks, Dad, for being present. The card says, when you pick me up early from school and we go to McDonald's, not to eat, just to play in the ball pit. <laughs> Those are the best days of my life. Thanks, Dad, for being present. You know what the card says? Thanks for caring. Thanks for the hundreds of hours that you're going to worry about. It says thank you for the, the kisses on the forehead, the deep, the, the cold rag on the fever's forehead, the, the band-aid on the boo-boo. It says thanks for caring. That's what you do so well. Thanks for being present. It's a cute story, Kelly, but how does it help us as future health professionals? Here's how it helps. The card says so much more than those things. It tells me something. It reminds me of something we learned a long time ago from our parents. And we learned from our parents, it's the thought that counts. And that is true. The thought does count. But I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, my daughter could have came home and said, Daddy, I saw this card and I thought about getting it for you. And I said, that's so sweet. The thought does count, but it's the action that makes a difference. You learned some amazing things over the past few days. You can think about applying those things to your life. That's good, but it's the action that makes a difference. You see, leadership doesn't happen here. Leadership doesn't happen in WA. Leadership happens when you take the things you've learned, you leave here, and you apply them to your state and local chapters. That's what leadership happens. That's when you care. It's funny, if my daughter Mason never sees me talk about this part, if I never bring it up in front of her, 10 years from now, will she ever remember getting for me? No. Well, I forget. I don't know. People notice when you're present, they notice when you're not. You know, to create great moments, be present. Number two, appreciate the little things. Oh, appreciate it. And you know what I'm talking about when I say appreciate the little things. This is a room of good looking people. You've been on a day I'm sure someone's walked up to you at some point and said, You look good in that place, or you did this something here. You're well. <laughs> you had those moments. No, you had those moments. Have you ever, have you ever walked by the mirror and just went yourself and had to do a second stare at you? Mmm. Mmm. Right? Appreciate the little things. Little things matter. Little things make up our quick life. I love the little things. I had this experience not too long ago. For years, I've been involved with uh, helping our, my state association in Oklahoma with uh, preparing our national officer candidates. And I started this in 2006. And I was fortunate to help a young man. His name was James Newman. And James Newman and I did a lot of work because James had a lot of work he needed to do in a good way. James had a world, a world of, of great things to offer, but he couldn't find it himself to understand that he had some really great things. I could see him. His advisors could see him. You could see him, but he couldn't see him within himself. So we spent a lot of time working on that. Luckily, James wanted to be elected. He was a post-secondary student. I lost touch with James. That was in 2006. Fast forward to 2015, just a few months ago, I'm in the hospital with my father. He was in the hospital for about a week, and I was fortunate enough to enjoy one of the great hospitals, beds slash chairs, for that week's stay. We're in a hospital in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the reason my dad was there is because he wasn't taking care of himself. Because for so long he's been caring about other people and he's failed to take care of himself. It's important, most of members, it's important that you take time to take care of yourself. You're the greatest resource you have to offer. I'm sitting there with my father, we're trying to get to, you know, get out and, and get all the paperwork done. And, and I go to the doctor and said, hey, we haven't seen a nutritionist yet. My father needs to see a nutritionist. He doesn't take care of himself that way. I said, we need to see a nutritionist. He said, well, I've talked to your father, and he said that wasn't necessary. He said, no, 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 it's necessary. Would you please do the nutritionist? And he said, yes, and, and a little while later, this nutritionist comes in. And to be honest with you, the reason my dad hasn't taken care of himself is because he doesn't know how. And he's a little embarrassed to ask. He's a grown man, and he doesn't really know how to, you know, to, to make a meal that's healthy and the exercise he should do. And, and the, this nutritionist walks in, and, and he says to my father, and I just sit back and I watch him. And my father's very reluctant at first. 
And the, the situation spends some time with him. He says, he, he makes this analogy. He has this bedside manner that I'm just like, it's so amazing. And, and I can just see all the years of work and study and preparation just pouring out of him into another human being that he doesn't even know. And as he leaves, I shake his hand and say, thank you so much. And I look at my dad. My dad looks up at me, 50, or 63 years old, and he says, I think I can do this now. He made a lot of sense. He made it so easy for me to understand. And I said, I know, that's, that's really cool. And he said, uh, did you know him? And I said, yeah, man. I trained in 2006 at James Newman. The officer that I trained in the past, he's the chief nutritionist at the hospital now. And as I said, watching him take everything he's learned, not just healthcare, but the soft skills that you learn in HOSA, the ability to care, the ability to relate, the ability to make people feel safe in that safe world. Because here's what you do. When everyone like me, when the normal people, because you're not normal, <laughs> and you know that, you're the people that are watching open heart surgery when you're eating dinner. All right, you're not normal. <laughs> Some of you are like, "That's actually makes for a good Friday night." I like it. So, <laughs> Sorry, <Dave. laughs> but here's how it's different: because when normal people like me run from the pain, you run toward the pain. You run toward the chaos. You run toward all the bad things and you run toward with a smile on your face and love in your heart saying, I'm here to help. What can I do? Appreciate the little things. Here's the free one. How many of you people watch? Are the people watching in the room? Don't be ashamed. Raise your hand. It's fine. There's people watching. For those of you looking around right now thinking it's called staring, not if you don't get caught. <laughs> Here's the free one. I'll give it to you. Years ago, my brother and I, we were at the mall in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I was in college. He came up to see me. We were doing one of our things, which is favorite things in the world, which is people watching. As we were doing it, my brother pulled out an iPod, and he put one earpiece in my ear and one ear in his ear. And as we were watching, people walked by and we would give them theme songs. <laughs> oh, you can get off the hook. You got to go. <laughs> go to the airport today and do this, okay? We were giving them theme songs. And I thought, how cool would that be if you had a theme song? Everywhere you went, people could hear. Everyone could hear. You're walking down the street, theme song song, right? Walk through the airport, people can hear you walk into class, people can hear. So to put it in perspective, what I did was I took some theme songs, people that you and I, celebrities and people you and I both know, and I gave them theme songs. For example, uh, when I was a kid growing up, uh, Tom Cruise, this was his theme song. Now this was when I was a child growing up, Tom Cruise, this was his theme song. Have you heard this? The Top Gun theme song. That might not mean that much to you now, but think about this. Think if this is your theme song, you're walking into class. They have a big test. Everyone's in there seated. Friends are in there. Teachers in there. You walk in and this song comes on. You look at your friends. You look at your teacher, get one of these. Shut that down, okay? I'm sorry. My <laughs> oh, bad. I heard a guy in the thing. My oh, bad. <laughs> we care. I'm just cool. <laughs> Here's what we're going to uh, At one time, at one time, uh, one of the, the greatest golfers in the world, Tiger Woods, this would be his theme song. On that star in the sky, on that mountain, you go high. Also, it is. That was his theme song. Now, now this is more likely to be Tiger's theme song. Cheater, cheater. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, oh, this is uh, oh, the professional quarterback Michael Vick. I didn't do anything. This would be his name's song. Who let the dogs out? Oh, here's your former vice president Dick Cheney. We're in DC. I probably shouldn't do this. <laughs> Don't let anybody hold that tape. <laughs> Because he shot a guy and no one seemed to care. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you call, follow college football, but a couple years ago, linebacker from Notre Dame, anti tab uh, This was his theme song. <laughs> <laughs> if you're looking around right now, his girlfriend wasn't real. That's probably <laughs> Oh, my favorite, my favorite, last my favorite one. At, at one time, at one, at one time, seven-time Tour de France champion 
Lance Armstrong. Again, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and they did. They called him Roddy Berry. My question for you is months, years from now, you will, you will leave Hosa. You will go on. You'll probably serve in the capacity of, of getting back as an alumni. You'll move on with your life. And what would your theme song be when people think of you, when they see what's going to come to mind? Appreciate the little things because the little things matter. Little things matter to, to someone who's worried about the, the care and well-being of their father, mother, brother, loved one. So a kind word, a reassuring smile, those do a lot. The little things make a huge difference. If you want to create great moments, appreciate the little things. Because they're all around you. The moments you share here, learning from other state associations, learning from other people, from other walks of life, appreciate those little moments. I love the little things. My daughter, my daughter Bone and I, we have a, we have something that's as small, as special, and sweet as between us. And when she was just a few months old, my favorite thing in the world is, is, is bedtime for her. That's our time. I like to get bath, so I want to read the story, I want to put on a little pajamas, I want to tuck her in. That's just my nature. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a love writer. I love our, our night times. And when, when I tuck my daughter in before I lay her down, I put her on my, on my shoulder and I just, I talk to her. And every night it's, it's different. I always put up the sign, but I just say, you're so, so, so special. And I, I maybe I'll tell her about how much fun I had playing with her that day. Or, or I, I talk about her future and how I can't wait to see who she becomes. Or I can't wait to see, you know, the things she does with her life. And she was probably, I don't know, two months old. She wasn't really talking yet. She couldn't form words with her. But at the end, when I get through talking to her, I just pat her on the little back and I just say, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. She was probably six months old. And she she said, I'm, I'm putting her down and I'm, I'm telling her all these things, how much I love her and this and that. And I start to pat her on the back, which is my way of saying I love you, her little hands. I know. I was there. <laughs> And now she can say it, but she doesn't say I love you without, without this. And this is special to us because this means so much more than I love you. That's our thing. One of these days she's going to graduate from high school and I'm not going to go home together because I cry watching commercials sometimes. Guys, I get emotional on it, right? I hear a sad song I got to pull over. So I, it might not be possible for me to go up to look at my daughter and say, sweetheart, I'm so proud of you, but all I have to do is this. Because it's more than I love you. It means so much more. One of these days she's going to get married. She'll be 50. <laughs> and she'll be married to an amazing guy because there's a long application process that she must go through. Because I consider myself a, a, a very cultured and respectful and docile man, but if I think for a second you might hurt my little girl, I'll be healed and will be very quick. <laughs> she'll get a wedding dress. And it won't be anything that anybody will understand but us. And all I have to do is just gently walk over. Because it's more than I love you. See, sometimes the little things mean so much more. Because the little things won't make us great because I understand little by little, little becomes a lot. This repetitive cycle of continuing to grow and develop yourself on a daily basis will pay off huge dividends. The little things you do for other people, because trust me, when you invest in others, you receive that investment tenfold. It's the little things that matter. You want great, great moments? Be present. Appreciate the little things. Finally, the most importantly, four simple words. You want great, great moments? Four things. Pack an extra sandwich. And I know you laugh, but I'm being serious. And here's why. There are two types of friends you will have in this life. There are friends and friends because. Friends because. Friends because we were in school together. Friends because we live close to each other. Uh, my, I have two friends, a, a husband and wife. They live in Norman, Oklahoma. They're named for David and Rachel Short. And, and David and Rachel Short of Norman, Oklahoma started off as friends because they were friends because of two things. Number one, we live close together. Number two, they have two children, the same age as our two children. They have a daughter, Charlotte Short. Charlotte, she is six years old. She's my daughter's best friend. They're in kinder or first grade now together. And they, they spend all the time together. Charlotte Short, beautiful little girl, brown hair, 
She's got these big brown eyes, these freckles, and she's just absolutely normal. She's very respectful. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you. Charlotte Short, she's welcome to my house anytime. It doesn't matter. She can stay as long as she wants. Love Charlotte Short. They have a son. His name is Shepard. Shepard is 10 days younger than my daughter Bowen. Shepard is a good looking dude. He's got the park on the side going on. His big blue eyes, his fair complexion, he's a good looking dude. Shepard is never, ever, 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 ever allowed to my house. <laughs> See the way he looks at my daughter. I tell him, you said the morning, you drink the milk, you won't have a problem. Right? Rachel David Short of Northern Oklahoma started off as friends because now they're friends no matter. Friends no matter what. We've, we've laughed so hard, we've cried together, we've cried so hard, we've laughed together. If I ever have to, to uproot and leave, the hardest thing will be leaving David Rachel Short of Northern Oklahoma. This summer, Rachel comes home, it's a Thursday night. She's got Sheriff on her hip. She doesn't knock the door, she just comes on and she doesn't have to. It's a Thursday night, our, our oldest girls were in, were in the daycare together, and on Fridays, they always go on a field trip. They go to the zoo, or they go to the splash pad, they go to the museum. Or, English are training, I don't know what they do, but they go somewhere. And Rachel's over, we talked a little while, she gets up to leave, and she said, hey, before I go, I wanted to, to tell you something. Uh, I came over here for a reason, and she said, two weeks ago, I was in the kitchen, it was Thursday night, and I was making lunch for Charlotte. You see, on Fridays, they go on the field trip, so they have to take their lunch with them. She said, I was making lunch for Charlotte, and Charlotte comes in the kitchen, Mommy, what are you doing? She said, sweetheart, I'm, I'm making lunch for tomorrow. She said, oh, good, are you packing extra sandwich? She said, sweetheart, Wasting people, you have to put in that food. I did peanut butter and jelly, it's your favorite. I have, uh, we got some, some goldfish, right? We had your little juice, but you have more than enough for not wasting people. She said, No, okay, mom, you leaves. I didn't think much of it. The next week, Thursday night, in the kitchen making lunch, Charlotte comes in, Mommy, what are you doing? She said, Sweetheart, I'm making lunch for tomorrow. Good, mommy, we'll be packing your sandwich. Sweetheart, we talked about this. You have more than enough food for not wasting people. I got you peanut butter and jelly. I got you some yogurt. I got some more slashes. It's more than enough. She said, Mommy, it's not for me. Well, who's it for, baby? She said, well, every Friday when we go on our field trips, at lunchtime, one of the boys in our class, his name's Colton, and Colton comes up to, to me or he'll go to Mason, and he'll, he'll say, if you're going to throw that away if you're finished with it, can I have it? Now, I understand what I'm saying to you people. He wasn't saying, I don't like mom and dad pack and you want to switch. He wasn't saying, I ate all my food and I'm still hungry. What he was saying is, if you're going to throw it away, please. And as a father of two children, my heart just broke. I looked at Rachel and said, what did you do? She said, I packed everything in that fridge. I just laughed at it. <laughs> and she leaves and she goes about her day. And that night is just in my head over and over again. Well, well, we can't just do something. And I'm not the person to stick my head in other people's business. But I couldn't let this go on. And hopefully there's, a, there's an optimistic side of me that thinks, maybe... His parents just don't know. And, and someone's going to tell them they're going to be very embarrassed for the right and wrong. But there's a realistic side of me that says people are hungry overseas. People aren't in need of things in third world countries. It's in our own backyard. And what am I going to do? And it occurs to me, it's very simple. And I go wake up, my daughter meets them, and I say, Mason, tomorrow morning when you go to school, this is your lunch. You eat as much or as little as you want. This is your but I packed an extra sandwich. This is for every reason. Mason, whose lunch is this? It's mine, Daddy. What's this? It's an extra sandwich. Who's it for? It's for every reason. Now I talk about packing an extra sandwich. Do I mean actually bringing the sandwich to you everywhere? No, but if you have one, I'll take it. I say pack an extra sandwich. Pack an extra sandwich means we put integrity before you go. Pack an extra sandwich means we are we-focused people in a me-focused world. Pack an extra sandwich means we don't just do the right thing when the right thing approaches, we search for the right thing to do. Pack an extra sandwich means we spend the late nights studying and working and preparing and driving ourselves to the end because one day we know we're going to be called and people are going to need us to be there, people are going to need us to care. Pack an extra sandwich means we pack an extra smile, an extra hello, an extra how you doing, or sometimes an extra don't worry, everything's going to be okay. Seems like a little thing, but little things make the biggest difference. My challenge for you guys is every day go out and pack an extra sandwich. Whether that be love, whether that be, be your time, whether that be giving you things that people don't have, that you have plenty of. Don't miss the opportunity to pack an extra sandwich. There are people in need, and we're in need of people like you. 
people that care. I want to finish with, with a final note, something I want you to remember. Um, we live in a house of, I have some pretty good rules for my girls. If you don't have rules for children, they tend to do weird things. I don't know how they even get the idea of the fact that my childhood now, I go, man, I feel bad for my parents, but you know, weird things happen when you don't have rules, right? Like if you tell the girls, hey, wash the dog, and don't give them instructions, they might put him in the dishwasher. Those things might happen. <laughs> So we have one rule, we have many rules, but one of the main rules in our house is that each one of my daughter, my daughter Bowen, she's, she's two and she knows the rule. She can say the rule. The rule is simple. Three words, be to get. That's the rule. My daughter Mason, since she was a baby, since she was a little tough, be to get. That's the rule. Mason, what's the rule? Be to get. Bobo, what's the rule? Be to get. And I don't want you, I don't want you to forget the rule, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide you up. This, these tables right here, your group number one, from here to here, your group number two, and this side over here, your group number three. Now, this is going to take some doing, so feel free to turn your chairs around and get ready to, to take some action here. You get comfortable, you can scoot to the edge of the seat, it's right before the shortfall. Um, group number one, anytime I point at you as loud as you can, you're going to scream the word, the first one, which is B. That's why you're just going to yell as loud as you can, B. So let's practice group one, your word is B. When I point to you, you yell the word is B. Here we go, ready? I want something good from the gut. Here we go. Group number two, your word is two. Should be easy to remember. Group two, your two. So whatever point you, as loud as you can, scream the word two. Here we go. Yeah! Group number three, you get it. It's get, right? That's what you are. There's less of you than anyone else, so you really got to bring something, okay? Your word is get. So whenever I point, you just yell it. No, oh, that was perfect, sweetheart. You brought that to a whole new level. I like it. That's a vibe. That's good. So, I'm going to point B to get B. I might just B, B, B. Whenever I point you, yes, let's practice. We go. B, B, B. Where were you? <laughs> you want to sleep on the job? Come on. Let's try again. B, B, very good. We're going to be two, get B two, get at the end. Here's what's going to happen. You get all together. I'm going to take my hands like this. You're going to take your hands like this. We'll start saying, yeah, just like that. Yeah. Put your hands up. Yeah. And I slap my hands. You slap your hands. You're going to yeah. Put the hands just like that. Let's try it. Yeah. A louder. Yeah. Make sure we remember it. Yeah. Bring it home. Yeah. I go long. You go long. Yeah. I go short. You go short. Yes. <laughs> we'll go back and forth, back and forth, beat you, get beat you, get my beat, 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 you, you, get me, get, get, yeah, boy, just like that. Great sound, huh? Uh-huh. Let's finish. Don't be all in a big way, guys. You learned a lot of great things. Let's finish strong. You guys ready? Say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's make sure they hear. I want a police officer to show up and tase one of you for being too loud. I volunteer. So I'm going to be you. That's okay. Got a strong man next to you, right in front. Give him a shot. Here we go. B2 get. WLA 2015, we care. Symphony. B2 get. B2 to get something out of us. Not in. Involved. Be too get means you have to be willing to fail in order to get success. You have to be willing to do the hard things to get to the easier front lines. Be too get means so many things. It means you have to be willing to run toward the pain to give the chance to ease someone's pain. It means you have to be willing to care in order to build a caring world. Be to get it. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, if you practice the rule, which is B2 get, and you teach others the rule, which is B2 get, and you apply the rule, which is B2 get, and you 
Monday, I guarantee you all. We got to be! I know. Because we were here. Thank you guys very much. It's a bit cheesy, but thank you for giving us the, no, 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 not your speech. <laughs> thank you for giving us the gift on how to make our time rich. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Kelly Barnes. <laughs> Before we finish things off, we'd like to bring Santina up here. Your National Executive Council would like to share one last video with each and every single one of you. And as you guys watch the video, we hope that you reflect on the past four days and the experiences, experiences that you have had here. Would the National Executive Council please join me on stage?
The experiences we've had over the past few days have made us better than we've ever been. So the challenge for all of us now is to be the best that we can be. And that concludes the ninth annual Washington Leadership Academy. So congratulations, WLA class of 2015. Let's do it big. Let's do it big this year.